It seems that if you want to get an op-ed about atheism published in a British paper, you have two choices when it comes to your subject. You could either write about what a bunch of racists atheists are, or what a bunch of assholes atheists are. Take, for example, a recent op-ed that appeared in the Telegraph by one Brendan O'Neill. O'Neill is an atheist who titled this column, How Atheists Became the Most Colossally Smug and Annoying People on the Planet, and then backs it up by spending the entire column being colossally smug and annoying. Now, I'd made it as far as the headline before I decided to start writing a refutation of his points for this week's diatribe, and when I finished, I looked back over my notes, only to discover that I'd just written fuck you, fuck you, fuck you for three pages. And while that did perfectly capture my sentiments after reading this crap, I felt I owed our listeners a bit more specificity than that. So let's look at the specific points he made, and don't worry, there aren't many. O'Neill isn't so much a facts and data guy as an anecdotal assertions and hand-waving dismissals guy, so there's not much here to refute. He starts the article by lamenting a time when atheists weren't such smug pains in the asses, when one could say that one was an atheist without people assuming that they were, quote, a smug, self-righteous loather of dumb hicks. Apparently, he longs for the good old days, when people would would just burn you alive if you said that. Why, it's gotten so bad that when people ask him, he doesn't even use the A-word. He says he's a very lapsed Catholic. And think about just how smug and annoying we had to get before somebody would rather associate themselves with a group that actively campaigns against the rights of women, the rights of gays, and the rights of children not to have unsolicited penises inserted into them. And what horrible crime did we commit to make Brendan ashamed of his non-belief? Well, for starters, we make pseudo-clever statements. The example he gives is, did you know that Leviticus also frowns on having unkempt hair? Well, how dare some atheist point out the ridiculous shit in Leviticus? What kind of asshole would try to diffuse the exact portion of the Bible that's used to justify bigotry against gays? What kind of asshole would point out the inconsistency of using this book to justify your discrimination and then ignoring the parts about shellfish? But don't worry, that's not all we did wrong. We also had the audacity to be smarter than theists and recognize that. He takes his atheist Facebook friends to task for sharing the recent uh, meta-analysis that we discussed last week that once again showed the correlation between intelligence and atheism. O'Neill dismisses the whole study as being not scientific, not research, and in fact, quote, a pre-existing belief dolled up in rags snatched from various reports and stories. This is a meta-analysis of scores of studies weighted by the scientific rigor with which they were conducted. While one can still argue causation if one wishes, the fact that atheists are, on the average, more intelligent than believers is undeniably true. Mountains of data back up this assertion, but that doesn't stop O'Neill from pretending it came from some flyer or crazy guy on the subway was handing out. Pre-existing beliefs. He says, well, yeah, they were pre-existing because we already knew that shit long before they did this particular study, you puddle of anal sweat. To give you an idea of the, just the kind of brain feces this guy was throwing against the wall, he actually says at one point that Richard Dawkins' Twitter followers, quote, make those Kool-Aid drinking Jonestown folks seem level-headed in comparison. Now keep in mind that he says this while he's lamenting other people being smug and pseudo-clever. The biggest flaw in his reasoning, of course, is that he seems to think that people's beliefs deserve respect. He seems to think that people should have carte blanche to spread whatever nonsensical and demonstrably false notions about the world that they'd care to, and no one should ever point out that they're wrong, because that would be smug or annoying. And it's way better to be ignorant. It's way better to live in a world surrounded by ignorance. It's way better to live in a world where scientific advancement is stifled, women are institutionally discriminated against, gays are flatly denied rights, children are physically and psychologically abused, and looming environmental disasters are ignored on the authority of a book that can be proved fallacious by a ten-year-old. That's way better than annoying, right? So in conclusion, to Brendan O'Neill, a man too cowardly to publicly embrace his own atheism, a man that would rather endorse the stereotype than prove it wrong, a man that would spend a whole column writing about how superior he is to all those atheists with their superiority complexes, I want to say that we'd also rather you identify yourself as a Catholic.